Meet Silverstone's Hydrogon. Ignoring that the name kinda sounds like Captain America was watching a bit too much Game of Thrones, this thing is actually the flagship air cooler that Silverstone is offering right now. It got two of Silverstone's in-house made HYD120 ARGB fans featuring that unicorn dust, a ton of heat pipes and probably the weirdest meant on fan clips I have ever seen. So this is Silverstone's big boy air cooler, the Hydrogon D120 ARGB. Fully assembled, this thing comes at a pretty conservative 153mm height. And even the width is kept pretty small. The two relatively thin fin stacks that make this thing a dual tower cooler are roughly 30mm thick, making the Hydrogon one of the slimmest dual tower coolers we have seen until today at 112mm thickness. But no matter if thick or not, thanks to the Hydrogon's severe offset of the right fin stack, it never even approaches the RAM slots, making this thing a 100% RAM compatible cooler. The fans used on here are referenced once as being HYD120 ARGB and they do not seem to be available separately and therefore seem to be specifically made for the cooler. No matter if that is true or not, it's kind of my guess, these 120mm ARGB fans are spinning at 1850rpm while pushing around 56.23 CFM at 1.98mm of H2O. So they are not the worst heatsink fans out there, but they are surely like the first point of improvement for this cooler overall. On the compatibility front, Silverstone's Hydrogon can be mounted on top of the usual AM4, AM3 and so on until FM1 on Team Red. Over on the blue side of the world, we can use it on the newest LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150, 1366, 2011, 2066 and even the ancient stuff like an LGA 775. The bottom of the cooler consists of one surprisingly big block of nickel plated copper base with a total of 6 copper heat pipes going from top to bottom on both fin stacks. Installing the cooler is a surprisingly easy process. For AMD we first need to remove the standard retention bracket and replace them with the provided spacers and screw them in by using the double sided screws with the thick side going in at the bottom. From here just position the back plate in an inwards pointing position and screw it down using the thumb screws. Over on Intel's side we need to use the provided back plate and position the screws into the hole on each end of the position marked with your socket. After placing the back plate behind the motherboard we can continue by positioning the spacers with the brackets on top in an inwards pointing orientation and screw it down using the thumb screws. From here on both platforms use some of that provided thermal paste, slap the cooler on top, use the provided screwdriver to mount it down. Now did you notice anything strange? I've never removed the fans to install the cooler. Not even once. This may seem to be kind of absurd but it kind of makes the process quite an enjoyable. Of course you can remove the fan like on any other cooler out there but you just don't need to and I Think that make the whole process a bit more enjoyable for me. Okay, with the installation out of the way, let's see how this thing actually performs. Using our usual test setup and letting the Hydrogon D120's fan spin at 100% of their speed, that thing managed to keep the 3900 x at 52 degrees C, being placed somewhat in the center of our whole benchmark list and just 1 degree C behind the Arctic Freezer 50. On the noise to performance end, it does not look that good. While it does manage to keep the CPU relatively cool compared to every other cooler out there, it wasn't able to outperform the Arctic Freezer 34 over the whole spectrum. Sure, it can keep the CPU one degree cooler, but as soon as you turn that fan speed down even a little bit, the Hydragon is utterly beaten, making the last spot almost all the way through. And this already marks the first issue I have with the cooler, the fan. With 1.98mm of H2O while pushing 56.23 CFM, these fans are just, they are just not enough for that heatsink. Sure, you don't need to go as crazy as for example Fantex T30s, but even Arctic's Bionics P120s used on the Freezer 34 outperform these fans by quite the margin. Why are the, um, are the spinning anymore? Okay. 
that can actually be seen on the benchmark. Not even talking about the fact that these fans are surprisingly loud for only 1850 RPM. But it doesn't end here. What the hell is this mess? Yeah, sure, the ARGB signal and PVM cables are daisy chainable and that's really really great. But why does every cable need to be that long? One fan could have gotten the standard cable length while the other one could have gotten a really really short cable that is just barely making it to the other fan to be daisy chained. This would just have removed the, a whole bunch of cable mess. Then it's not just the, the mess itself, it's also the fact that the cables are entirely made out of that, that rubber plastic material which is just making everything feel a bit clustered. Whereas something like braided cables make everything look really clean. The last point of possible improvement that I have is due to the, how the cooler is being installed. I love the fact that I can install the cooler without needing to remove even a single fan. That's amazingly easy. And this removes a, a lot of fiddling with the stem fan clips and, and all of that. No, my issue is the fact that during the installation, the actual screw is placed on these brackets while installing the cooler, we are actually screwing in the nut that will be holding onto the screw. Basically the reverse of what you would do with any screw out there. Now, during normal operation, this is absolutely not an issue. The issue comes up because of the... Uh, the issue comes up because of that Arctic Silver 5 that I'm using for all of my benchmark. This thing is freaking sticky. And due to that screw being always inside the nut on the cooler side, until I pull that whole thing off in a perfectly straight angle, it may just end up ripping out your CPU. Of course, this is an AMD only thing, and this will be probably over with the next generation of AMD when they get LGA sockets, but the fact that I am not able to give the cooler even the slightest twist during removal made me rip out my 3900X during the review. Twice. Very good job. And this is actually fairly easy to solve. Just make sure that the washer that is keeping the nut from falling out is letting the nut go far enough so that it can completely let go of the thread. And that way the heatsink is free to wiggle and you can give it like a very light twist before you pull it off. So, to buy or not to buy? Well, the Hydrogon 120D RGB is clearly not the worst cooler out there. The RGB even looks kind of decent, I, I think, and it has kind of that raw finish due to the aluminum heatsink. I, I like it. Even the price isn't any deal breaker. Right now, I can get a Hydrogon for around 45 euros, which is a refreshingly good price. The issue is that uh, the Freezer 34 eSports do exist. And while the Freezer is going for only 38 bucks, it is better in absolutely every category except for the fact that I cannot install it without removing both fans during installation. But let's be completely honest, that's like the smallest thing that you can win in this review. So in my opinion, there are just better options out there. Sure, you won't do anything wrong if the design is something that you are going for. The Hydrogen is still okay for something like a Ryzen 7, i7s and everything underneath. But believe me, you will be happier with other models out there. Okay, so this should be it for Silverstone's Hydrogon 120D RGB. At this point, a huge thank you to Silverstone for sending it over. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Frieza 34 Esports Duo I was just talking about. It's like one of my favorites. On a side note, we now have a Discord server, so use the link in the description below and join us. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.